Hello and welcome to another video. My name is Nigel, also known as Lake Erie Vlogger, and today I'm going to take you out for a CD ride in cold weather. It is now November and uh, the weather is getting cold. It is not as warm as it has been of late and many of you have now already winterized your sea dews, jet skis or whatever and put them away for the winter. Well here in the, the southern part of Canada there's still a few of us still riding and we plan on riding right until probably the end of November which is when our insurance ends for being out on the water. I think it's midnight on the 30th of November because you've got to take your vessel off the water. It's expected you take it off the water for four months of the year. So anyway what I'm going to be doing today is just showing you what I do on a day like today. So this video is probably aimed at a lot of people who are pretty new to sea do and I'm just going to show my experience of what I do uh, when I'm riding on a day like today. Uh, if you've watched any of my previous videos, the last couple of times I've been out I've been wearing like uh, just warmer gear uh, but today it is a lot colder and I'm probably most likely going breaking out the wetsuit today. But first of all what I always do before I go anywhere is I check the weather updates. So one of the first things I always do is check Windy. Windy's always a great idea. Uh, it tells you exactly what I need to know when it comes to the weather. And the winds right today are actually quite nice. They're very, very light. and supposed to get lighter as the day goes on. So I just want to check. So uh, this is Port Coburn right here. And this is Crystal Beach. I'm going to be launching from Crystal Beach. There we go. Uh, wind and wind gusts. I always go straight to wind gusts. So I'll put a pin uh in the area i am and so the wind gusts right now are looking at 21 kilometers an hour in the crystal beach area and if i just fast forward it a couple of hours or so uh the winds are actually dropping to like 18 kilometers an hour uh by 2 p.m and uh so on uh but what about um the temperature um temperature is currently eight degrees celsius which is 816 plus 816 uh, 46 degrees fahrenheit approximately so it is pretty chilly uh, now another thing I want to do is just check out the sea temperature or the lake temperature and that's where we are. Uh, currently in the, uh, in the Crystal Beach area it's 14 degrees Celsius, the actual water temperature. But with that kind of like northerly wind we've got today, if you get any spray it's going to be bloody cold, trust me. Next thing to do right now is get the ski ready and get all my clothing I need uh, for this adventure. All right, as you can see, the leaves are off the trees. We're definitely into the middle of fall now, not far away from winter. So I just took the ski out of the, uh, the garage, brought it out. And oh, just to let you know, um, I've actually got the truck winterized, <laughs> ready for winter, but I've got the sea dew winterized. Snow tires back on. So anyway, all right, ten, this is what I tend to do. When I get my sea dew out, <clears throat> what I like to do on a regular basis is check everything over. Uh, my straps, drain plugs, especially drain plugs. I do this multiple times. So as soon as I pull the CDU out, next thing I'm going to do is just tighten up the straps. Because it's been sat there for a couple of days or a couple of weeks. They tend to get loose a little again. And then I'll, at the same time I do that, I always check the drain plugs. That one's in. Oh, that one's a little loose. And uh, basically just give the uh, sea do a quick look over, make sure everything's good. Now the last time I went out riding, I was out in uh, Port Coburn. I actually stayed pretty close to shore the whole time. So I was wearing my uh, my sailing gear basically, which is this uh, Heli Hansen waterproofs. Which is great if I know I'm not going to be anticipating them falling in or actually venturing into the water. But today, however, there's a slight chance, a good chance, I'm actually going to get in the water because I need to get to shore. Uh, the weather conditions are great, like the water's really calm. Uh, I'm going somewhere to film something, and I need to get into the water. So the best thing to do today is definitely wear a wetsuit. And also, because I'm going quite far out on my own today, just in case the worst ha something like the worst happens and my vessel does sink. At least I've got a wetsuit on and it'll keep me warm enough uh, until rescue arrives. All right, so today is all about layers being out on the water trying to keep warm because um, the breeze is a little chilly. So I'm going with the wetsuit today. Uh, this is a three millimeter and a four millimeter. So it's four millimeter on the torso, three millimeters on the arms and legs, which is great. Underneath that, uh, for comfort, I stick a rash guard underneath, give me a little bit more protection. And on top of the rash guard, I'll probably wear a t-shirt, either a short sleeve or a long sleeve, just give me that extra warmth, trap it in. Uh, but nothing too heavy. 
And then on top of the wetsuit, I'll throw on a dry top as well, uh, just to keep me warm and also keep the wind off me and so on. So the good thing about wearing a wetsuit today is basically all the heat in your body, if you were to fall into the water, once that water gets into your wetsuit, the heat then goes into that water which is in your wetsuit and warms up, okay? And that gives you a little warmth inside you and traps it all in. and It'll keep you warm for quite a bit of time uh, if, if an emergency was to happen. And it'll give you enough time for a bit more survival time. So with the emergency radio, I have the whistle and stuff and anything like that. I, I wouldn't expect to be stuck out there for a long time, but the wetsuit would really, really help on a day like today to improve your chances of survival in case of a worst case scenario. And that's basically it. And I'll also wear uh, I'm more of a life vest today. We've got a bit of color in it uh, so I can be seen in case of emergency because I'm out on my own. Oh, one other thing, um, got to mention, feet. So these are good enough. These are the Sea-Doo neoprene boots. Uh, I've had these for a few years, love them. They actually are really, really good. Um, never had an issue with them. I wear these in the beginning of the season, uh, in April when the water's only like two or three degrees. Ice. <laughs> and they are good enough for that, trust me, I do like them. And on for my hands, uh, these are the best gloves I've found. Uh, these are Vizsla gloves, and I bought these in the UK a few years ago, and they're actually surface gloves. So they're kind of neoprene, uh, I think they're seven millimeter, um, but they, they've got rubber coating on the back, which really helps keep your fingers a lot warmer, because uh, the wind just deflects right off it. So uh, these are being really, really good. I tend to find when I ride with these on in April, when it's cold, like two or three degrees, my fingers will get cold after about an hour. Uh, but for the first hour, I'm usually pretty good. It's currently only seven degrees. Hopefully it'll warm up a little bit more, try and get to 10, be nice, but we're at seven. Nice, quite a lot of people down here on, out on boats today. There's been some kind of fishing thing going on. The water looks really good today, by the way. And the good thing is the docks are still in. So I could have no problem launching. I was worried because last year they took the dock out um, before the end of October. Because two years ago it got smashed, three years ago it got smashed up during a storm. So the water conditions look good. All right, get changed and get ready to get out there. Oh, it's so good to be back out on the water, even though it is cold. So here we are, early November, Lake Erie, well into the fall now, just over a month away until the winter. And uh, depending on how the, the fall goes, I mean, we could start seeing ice on this lake probably in about six weeks time. Uh, it's usually end of December we start to see it if it's going to be a cold winter. Uh, but the last couple of winters we've had minimal ice uh, where it's just been on the shoreline. Uh, it's been a few years since we've seen the lake completely covered with ice, but you never know, right? Weather keeps changing constantly. So anyway, uh, dressed up for winter as you can tell. Got the hat on. I'll probably put another hat on in a minute to keep my head warm. Uh, full wetsuit. Hey Hanson. Shorts. Life vest. A couple of extra layers underneath. It's quite nice, I actually feel over warm right now. Uh, mind you, once I start accelerating, it'll get a bit cooler. Also got my coffee with me, and what I'm trying to do is get over to the lighthouse and make a video, which I've been working on for quite a while. So it's not a sea dew related video, but I'm taking you for the ride anyway. Uh, I've been thinking of making this video for quite a while. I've been over there a few times over the last year, getting different shots, uh, going also on the tour of the lighthouse, uh, getting the shots I wanted there. And now I just need to finish off the video in, but I need to get on land. <laughs> And the last few weeks I've tried, the weather hasn't been nice here. Uh, I'm not being able to get out because it's been rough virtually every weekend for the last uh, four weeks. Uh, but today's perfect, so we're going to give it a shot. So I'm all tethered in. And we're going to go for a ride. So uh, let's go. I'll tell you what we should do. Just hold that thought a second. Ah. Yeah. I look like the fly again. That's better. All right. Let's go. Let's go and have some fun on Lake Erie in November. It's currently 7 degrees Celsius. 44 degrees Fahrenheit. Lake temperature is about 14 degrees, which is about... Uh, 58, 56, 58 degrees Fahrenheit, and uh, we're on the water. Chili, don't have the gloves 
on just yet. But sat here doing 50 km an hour, 30 miles per hour, and he feels very comfortable. It's actually very, very nice out here today. Uh, nice than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be really, really cold. And so far, after 15 minutes, I feel pretty good. Early days yet, though. <sighs> McDonald's coffee, $1.50 for a large. Can't go wrong with that, can you? Oh, that warms me up a bit. So just down in the distance there, that's Buffalo, for those people who are new to my channel. Uh, it's Buffalo, New York. And over that way, uh, it's uh, Point Avenue Lighthouse, which, which is what we're going to shortly. Beyond that is Port Coburn. And then way down there, past all the, uh, you can't see it behind the camera, but past all the windmill things, Long Point, and then you'd end up down at Port Dover. Over this way, uh, the very far west end of New York State, which leads into Erie, um, Pennsylvania and stuff like that, all the way down the coast. So anyway, this is Lake Erie on a beautiful early November's day. wearing a wetsuit today because I'm in the water. It actually feels really nice quite honest. Uh, I got the CD anchor though it's very shallow here quite rocky as well but I managed to uh, get two anchors down. I got one anchor and a sandbag with a big rock in it so I'm in an area where there shouldn't be a really any rocks that should trouble me. So anyway while I'm here do what I'm meant to be doing. All right, here I am, Point Abano Lighthouse. Beautiful day, early November. I managed to anchor the sea dew just over there. And uh, coming out here is just fantastic. Uh, not being able to get out here that often uh, due to the very low waters we've had recently, but it's a little bit higher today, so I managed to come down the channel. <laughs> and the scariest thing is, I think the water's receded since I've been here, because that rock over there <laughs> wasn't sticking out when I arrived. And you can see it now just sticking out. So I'm gonna have to be very careful. And what makes it worse now is a bit of a breeze which is causing ripples. So I won't be able to see very clearly as I leave. So anyway, this is Point Abano Lighthouse. And this is Lake Erie. Now I'm not gonna tell you too much about Point Abano Lighthouse because I'm gonna put that in a separate video which is what I've been working on. Uh, but just very briefly, it's a Canadian heritage, uh, historic site, basically. And it's been here for over a hundred years. And it still looks like it was just built the other day, really. And it just needs a bit of a power wash. But apart from that, it's a great looking structure. You can see it for miles away. Now you can just imagine back in the day, in the like, late 1800s, early 1900s, Vessels out here when Buffalo was a bustling hub of activity uh, where ships were coming in, drop off, all, drop off all their loads and stuff. Uh, these waters would have been treacherous for those old wooden sailboats and the earlier steam uh, vessel boats that came along here. And uh, without the lighthouse here, they were quite often in storms, get blown onto the rocks. And there's a lot of uh, casualties back in the day and there's a lot of shipwrecks out here on Lake Erie. 
And so it is considered that it is best to put a lighthouse here, even though on the Canadian side, there wasn't much need for it because most of the shipping was done by the Americans. Uh, but the Canadians also realized it's needed. So uh, working together with the Americans, this thing was built. More information and the history of this thing will be in a new video very shortly. Would have been fascinating to just be out here back in the day over 100 years ago to watch the bigger ships come by here and probably come really, really close. I mean, there is a marker out there, a channel marker. And uh, once you get past sight, it's like 30 feet deep. But a lot of them here, if you can go about two or 300 meters and it's less than 10 feet deep in most places. Uh, so you gotta be very careful. And back then they didn't have the technology we have today uh, to safely guide you into these places or safely guide you around. So uh, yeah, Lake Erie is a very dangerous spot if you don't know it very well. Thankfully today we have Garmin's and things like that and more navigational charts we can actually ever dream of to help us navigate these places. When I first visited Point Abano Lighthouse uh, about six, seven years ago on a kayak, uh, this was all underwater where I was standing. I had to actually manage to pull the kayak on, on the other side and the water would have been up to here easily. And today, uh, the lake levels are much lower than what they were back then. And they're actually getting pretty much closer to what they should be. Uh, for the last 10, 15 years, the water levels have been very high on the Great Lakes. And Lake Erie is uh, the last lake of the Great Lakes to actually get back to its normal level. Uh, all the others are already getting there, uh, but we're still a couple of feet away from uh, the actual normal level of water level around here. Oh man, yeah, the wind's blowing me all over the place. And I can't see because the bloody ripples on the water. Oh, it ain't good. All right, follow that track the best I can. If I follow that line, perfect. Once I get past that rock there, I should be fine. Let's gotta get to that fucking rock. See, I drifted again. I need to go over here. All right, easy, easy. There's the other rock. I can see it sticking out of the water. Yeah, this ain't good. I do some stupid things sometimes. Oh, there's a rock right underneath me! Ay, 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 ay. All right, didn't touch it. I remember rolling over one earlier. Just gotta get out of this <coughs> shallow right here. There's one to my right, one to my left. Okay, that sun helps, I think. All right, away from that rock. Gee. Right, straight line, straight line, Nigel. Oh, got some waves now, fuck. Oh, I think that's a rock I rode over. Oh no, maybe it was this one. No, holy shit. Fucking rocks everywhere. <laughs> okay, it's, it's harder going back out than it is coming in. Get back on track. All right, now turn this way. I'll come on, GPS, change. All right, two feet of water, big f***ing rock. Yeah, I'm drifting off, drifting off course again. I can't see because of the f***ing sun. All right, I got about another 30 feet to go before I feel safe. Oh, this, this glaring sun and ripples don't help. Okay, back on track, on the track, on the track. There we go. There we go. On the track. Can't see. The water looks black, suddenly. There's a rock here somewhere on my GPS because I marked it. Should be to my left. Let's enlarge that. Yeah, it should be right on my left now. Okay. I should have gone past it. It is. Oh my god. Okay. Now I'm getting to some deeper water.
that glaring sun and the wind causing the ripples makes it really hard to see what's under the water here usually it's not that bad a lot worse going out than it was coming in thankfully the gps helped because i just followed my track back out Seven feet, but I still know there's another rock somewhere. All right, nine feet of water. I think we're back out now. So this happened and I only found out when I got home when I uploaded the video footage and I realized why are all these clips not playing? Well it turns out everything I recorded on the GoPro 8 which was uh, mounted at the back of the sea froze. It, it played, it uh, recorded the first bit, then the video stopped but the audio would continue and it did that in about eight different clips. Uh, so I don't know whether it's to do with the wind noise or whatever and uh, once it gets too much it can't process it all. Or it's the fact that my SD card is glitching, or the GoPro's had it. One way or another, I need to figure it out. If you've had the same issue with GoPro, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it, because uh, I think it could be a GoPro problem. See, he did it again, and this time there was a flicker before he actually froze. So, there you have it. I think I have a GoPro or SD card. I'll figure it out. All right, back off the water, and that is it. I was going to do some more filming, but uh, unfortunately, GoPro has a problem. When the battery gets cold, it dies really, really quickly, and that's what happened again today. So my battery just died as I was riding in, it didn't like it. And as soon as it warms back up again, I'm back to 80%, so rather bizarre. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. It was a good ride. And uh, wetsuit's off, and I'm just drying out. All right, just took the drain plugs out, let the water drip out. It's literally just a couple of, I don't know, a teaspoon of water pops out, and that's it. Put them back on, uh, put the straps on, and uh, now I just connect the cable back up, and uh, we're safe to roll again. All right, if any of you are interested in how I got my shots of me from behind, it's this mount here, uh, which is the Pro Flag uh, mount which I've featured in a video before. This was given to me uh, to try out and uh, it's actually really, really good. I don't use it for a flag that often, uh, but it is great for the GoPro at the top. Gives me those wonderful shots. Uh, it's good, it's easy, it just fits into here. So basically the company uh, makes the plate and then the bracket and then the poles go in. These four different poles, so you can have different heights. They all just screw into one another and you can have a, a flag on it. Or you just put your camera on there. It's mainly designed for GoPro, but you could probably put a DJI on there as long as you have the same screw-in little uh, mount at the top. So anyway, I'll put the link in the description for that as well. And it's well worth looking into, um, especially if you want to fly a flag. <laughs> and anyway, until the next adventure, which hopefully I'll get one more in before we winterize this. Um, I was actually trying to get out with Mark Forrest this weekend, but it never turned out. He had something going on tonight, so he couldn't make it down here. Uh, but maybe next weekend, if the weather's good, we'll try and get out one more time uh, before we winterize our sea -dos. So anyway, until the next video, stay safe, stay soon. Oh, stay safe, see you all soon. A bit of cold, I think. I forgot what else to say. Anyway, take care, stay safe, see you all soon.